After the latest almost daily night attacks by Shahed drones on the capital, monitoring channels have drawn attention to the fact that these drones first fly to Zitomir but turn around and try to attack the capital, according to TSN media outlet. Social media users do not rule out that this may be about testing new routes for a powerful strike, specifically at the capital. In turn, military experts reported that such a tactic of changing routes is most likely an attempt by the occupiers to force the Ukrainian armed forces to deploy air defense systems in different locations, spraying them. Shaheds are constantly changing their routes. In this way, the occupiers are not only trying to find out where exactly the air defense systems are located or where the territory is more saturated with mobile fire groups, they are thus trying to force us to place air defense systems and mobile fire groups in different locations. This is aimed at dispersion, dispersal of resources. They are trying to force us to do this. What the main route will be chosen in this case no one knows, says Oleksandr Kovalenko, military and political observer of the Information Resistance Group of Ukraine, in a commentary for TSN. The expert does not rule out that Putin's army could have chosen the tactic of a pause, waiting for cold weather to set in in Ukraine and for the heating season to begin. They could be planning for the beginning of November, the beginning of the heating season, to target the energy sector. Military expert Reserve Colonel of the Ukrainian Armed Forces Roman Civitan, in a commentary to TSN, says that Putin's army is looking for safe routes for the Shaheds to enter Kiev. It is possible that it may launch the so-called STAR. Such attacks by the Shaheds are an attempt to bypass the air defense, to approach the capital of Ukraine from a different azimuth. Before this, there were attempts to approach from the east, from the northeast, from the west, from the southwest, from the northwest, from the northeast, now from the side of Zitomir. By and large, again, unsuccessfully, because some of the Shaheds were destroyed, says Roman Civitan. According to him, such attacks are the standard operation of the enemy's weapons. What else could happen is that they could use the so-called star. That is, they could approach the city with Shaheds from all possible azimuths. For this, they could use about 150 shaheds at the same time. This could be a route planner. Savitan summed up. Russian servicemen have released a video showing that they are preparing to evacuate the bodies of their fellow soldiers killed in the battle. The invaders, who said that they were going to evacuate 10 dead bodies in total, revealed that they had to use an unusable passenger car for this. It seems that the Zigili car used by the Russian military has no doors and is dangerous to drive. Moreover, after the battle, the destroyed armored fighting equipment belonging to the Russian army can be seen in the area. Всем привет. Вот наша боевая тачка его. Ахай, ебать. Вот двухсотых грузим. Сегодня десять собрали его. Всем привет. A NATO Neptune strike exercise involving the US and Sweden has come to an end. Neptune Strike 24-2 took place across Europe, from the central Mediterranean and Adriatic up to the North and Baltic Seas and it was the first NATO exercise that Sweden took part in since becoming a member of the alliance. Around 15,000 soldiers and sailors took part, as well as 20 surface combat ships, submarines, special forces and fighter aircraft.
Neptune Strike is a strategic activity that shows NATO's deterrence and defense of the Alliance. Neptune Strike shows that NATO has the ability to strike at any time, anywhere, in order to defend the Alliance. We've done a great experience uh, during these two weeks. We have been conducting, for example, both close air support over the three Baltic states. We have also been uh, doing a lot of planning together with the US Navy, planning uh, larger air operations uh, with uh, air to air refueling and uh, a lot of air to air operations together with uh, the Super Hornets over the Baltic Sea. So we have a great up, great up experiences, both in the air and also on the ground as well. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving to the Kursk region near Ukraine, in what he called a dangerous and destabilizing move. Austin was speaking at a press conference with South Korean Defense Minister Kim Yong-hyun, as concerns grow about Pyongyang's deployment of as many as 11,000 troops to Russia. He said officials are discussing what to do about the deployment. Austin said the U.S. remains concerned that Russia will use the North Korean troops in combat, but whether they will be employed in the fight is yet to be seen. Kim said he doesn't necessarily believe the deployment will trigger war on the peninsula, but could increase security threats between the two nations. There is a high possibility that Pyongyang would ask for higher technologies in exchange for its troop deployment, such as in nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities, he said speaking through an interpreter. Seoul and its allies assess that the number of North Korean troops now dispatched in Russia has increased to 11,000, according to a senior South Korean presidential official, who spoke on condition of anonymity during a background briefing. More than 3,000 of them are believed to have moved toward combat zones in western Russia, the official said, without specifying the locations. Some North Korean advance units of those troops have already arrived in Kursk, where Ukraine has successfully held territory after a surprise counter-incursion in August. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce... Now, we're closely tracking the unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and the DPRK. In our meetings today, we shared de our deep concerns about the deployment of DPRK troops to Russia. We also discuss how we're going to work together with our allies and partners to respond to this dangerous and destabilizing escalation. The evidence now suggests that North Korea has sent around 10,000 soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And some of these DPRK troops have already moved closer to Ukraine. And we're seeing them outfitted with Russian uniforms and provided with Russian equipment. And I am increasingly concerned that the Kremlin plans to use these North Korean soldiers to support Russia's combat operations in, in Russia's Kursk region near the border with Ukraine. And let me rem remind you that Russia signed onto the UN Security Council resolutions agreeing not to provide military assistance to North Korea. Of course, we know that Putin has gone tin cupping to get weapons from the DPRK and Iran. Turning to a pariah state like North Korea for troops just underscores how much trouble he is in. And we take this very seriously. We urge the Kremlin to change course. And we fully understand the security implications for both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Putin will not prevail in Ukraine. 
even with, with more help from North Korea. Thank you.